everyone. Thank you for joining us for this week's Rise and Thrive with EHE Health, an interactive series where we're discussing all things health together. This week we'll be discussing healthy ergonomics while working from home and how to efficiently set up your workstation. My name is Nancy Ngai and I'm a well-being program manager at EHE. I'm also a certified ergonomic assessment specialist and I've been in the well-being and prevention space for over 25 years. I'm happy to be joined by Bavara from Perfect Posture Pilates today. Thank you so much, Nancy. I'm excited to be here. Um, I, my name is Bavara Kalinin. I am the owner of Perfect Posture Pilates in Astoria, New York. Um, I have been teaching Pilates and other complementary movement modalities for over 20 years. Before that, I was a professional dancer and actor. Over the course of my 20 years, I've taken numerous trainings in injury prevention and um, uh, injury prevention and protocols for uh, back injuries, uh, osteo working with people with osteoporosis, and working with uh, prenatal and postnatal populations. And I'm excited to be here today to join this discussion on how to improve your posture in your workplace. Great. I'm excited because this is definitely near and dear to my heart. I think when we first started working from home, um, I thought it would be, you know, two to three weeks and then here we are months later and potentially a little bit longer. And I, I think it's so important to think about your workstation. When we first started, I was excited in terms of trying to figure out, I don't know, excited was the word, but I was trying to figure out how do I set up my workstation? I'm just going to start working and start, you know, hitting the computer and making sure that I do my work. Well, now fast forward months later, you know, I think a lot of people are thinking about, well, what's going on? It's going to be a little bit longer. I'm feeling some tension in certain spots. And I think part of that is just simply looking at your workstation. Um, and this is a perfect time to be thinking about um, how you reevaluate what you're doing within the space you have. So hopefully today, both Bavar and I will be able to share some of our insights um, as you're working from home. And the first thing we want to talk about today is how much time you're spending in a certain position. Whether you're sitting for long periods of time or standing for long periods of time, that can have an impact on your body. So I think it's so important to be aware if you are at your desk diligently looking at, you know, your computer and doing your work or your back to back, like sometimes I am on calls, you know, to be really cognizant of the time you're spending in that one particular um, position. And you know, Vavar, you've probably seen a lot of clients that come in with all kinds of impact by being in a position for a long period of time. Yes, I do agree with you, Nancy. Uh, we are all in this together. We, are, we have this uh, rounded shoulder position throughout the day. We're looking at a small screen. Um, so what happens is, you know, the muscles, if you're in this flexed position forward, the muscles in your back get long and weak, and then your core muscles get weak as well. So it's so important to address and bring awareness to your spinal and pelvic alignment when you're sitting. So one of the things at the end of today, I will be showing you um, some, you know, stretches and some positioning that you can do throughout your day to make you just feel more at ease in your body. I think that's so, you hit it on the nail because when you're, you're not thinking about your posture and you're just sitting there, you're not engaging the core and ultimately you're using your low back quite often. And what I hear a lot of, um, from individuals are, I actually sit at the edge of my seat, so I'm making sure that I'm sitting upright and you're sitting like that for long periods of time, not realizing that you're not providing some support for your low back. So I feel like it's really important for you to make sure you're thinking about that and adjusting and occasionally leaning back and making sure that your low back is being supported. So that's really important. The other thing you mentioned too was looking at small screens. It's so true. I, I feel because I've been working on a computer, I'm constantly looking at a screen. And then when I want to decompress, I'm either looking at my phone to check in on social media or I'm watching TV and that's still screen time. And that has 
an impact on your vision as well as your eye. I feel like um, people aren't thinking about that. And this is a great time just to think about the strain that you might be putting on your eyes and how it can really cause eye fatigue. Um, one of the things I think is really helpful is just looking away from your screen for about 25 seconds. So all the viewers today, I would challenge you right now just to take a step back, lean back into your chair, take a deep breath in and look to your left. Take a deep breath out or blow out and get to the center. Now switch over and look to your right. Take a deep breath in and exhale and now just look forward again and just by doing that you're actually giving your eyes a little bit of a break from looking at the screen all day yeah just to add to that nancy um you know that's wonderful to look away and you know not only are you you know getting a, a little different uh movement in the eyes and the neck um, you can also do some eye exercises while still seated at your desk without having to leave. So if we can maybe uh, try this together. So you're going to extend one arm in front of you with the thumbs, you know, sticking out. And then what you're going to do is you're not going to move your head. You're going to move your arm and your thumb and you're going to follow that thumb with your eyes. Now, when you don't see your thumb anymore, you stop. And that's your range for that side of your eyes and you're going to bring that arm back to center and then let's do it to the other side and see if you have stronger vision to the left so like for me i have more strength going to the left like using my left peripheral vision so this is something you can train um and also you know i mean it kind of gets you back into more um, you know, kind of a bigger scope of your room, seeing a bigger scope in your room. That's great. And I think that that's extremely important, especially when you're looking at the screen, just to make sure that you're thinking about using the eyes in a different way than typically you might, because I feel a lot of folks are actually using the neck more so. To, to either look at the screen, look down, or what have you, versus using the eye movement. That's perfect. I, I, the other thing I get a lot about is equipment. Um, you know, when, when you're working from home, it's, I should be thinking about purchasing certain things to help my workstation and, and set it up a little bit more easily. Should I buy pieces of equipment? And I think First off, I think it's great that you're thinking proactively for those of you who have had those questions pop into your mind. But I do want to make sure that you're thinking about your workstation that works for you in the space that you have. So the first thing is first, let's see what you might need or might not, or if your workstation is set up the way that um, would be most efficient for you. So what I'd like you to do is look straight ahead without any kind of curvature in your neck. Just have it in this neutral um, alignment. And then what I want you to do is extend your arm straight out. That's the distance in which your screen should be. So if your screen is within arm's distance, that's perfect. If it's a little too far, you might jet out so that you're seeing what's on the computer. So that's the first thing. The second thing is as you're looking straight forward, you have to think about the angle of your screen. If you're looking forward and you can see your screen without moving your neck, then it's in a great position. Most of the time, if you're just using your laptop, you're likely looking down. And that puts a little pressure on your neck if you're doing that for five, eight hours a day. So that's something to be thinking about. Same thing goes for your screen. And I'm sure, Bavara, you've seen a lot of neck issues with some of your clients too. Yes, so the, the shearing forward of the neck is very common. Um, we call it the text neck now. Um, there's actually a term for it. Um, so one of the things you can do um, to kind of get the muscles in the neck to work um, in a more balanced way is not necessarily stretch your head side to side, but actually create some resistance for the muscles on each side of the neck to work. So we can try it together. The first is you can place your hand in front of your forehead and then just really gently drop your chin down a little bit and apply a slight pressure with your hand against your forehead 
as you're feeling the neck muscles in the front activate. Meanwhile, the neck muscles in the back are releasing. So that goes to both all the sides. You can place one hand on the right side of your, of your um, cheek and then push that right side into your hand. And notice how the right side of the neck is activating while the left side is getting the release. So you can kind of see, well, which side, you know, has more restriction if you're doing a little test and do it to the opposite side in order for the side that's tense to release. That's great because uh, a lot of times what I'll find is if I've got my laptop and I've set it up um, and I'm just using my laptop, I'll notice occasionally that I'm leaning forward. So that's always a check. Even in, in my situation where I'm always thinking about posture, I do get caught up in that because it's just the nature of the base and you're constantly thinking about, I've got to focus on this project at hand. And so one of the things I would recommend is when you're looking at your screen, depending on where it is, if you do need to raise it up, and for most cases with laptops, you do need to raise it so that your screen is at eye level. Yes. That is so important to avoid what Bavari had just mentioned. Um, an easy way to do that is putting books under it, maybe even putting a box or a step stool. Those work really great. Um, same thing goes for your monitor. The only thing I would say is make sure that it's super sturdy. So if you get up by it and you're running for some reason and you bump into the table, that everything doesn't topple over. But that can be accomplished by just things around the house. So that's very important. Um, what I also get a lot of questions around is, well, that's great and dandy, but what if I've got um, multiple monitors or I have my laptop and a monitor, that's really common to have that kind of a combination. What do I do there? the same rules do apply what you want to do is make sure your screens are side by side so when you're looking at your screen you can actually just use your eyes and read from left to right similar to the exercise we just did instead of tilting we've seen people that are typing on one side looking over to the other screen and that really wreaks havoc on the neck and your shoulder blades so part of it is just being diligent and setting up your screens so that they are side by side. And with the laptop, it's, it's something that you're just going to raise up and use an external keyboard. I know people don't love it because it's more mobile when you have a laptop. You can work on a kitchen counter, a dining table, maybe your bed or on the couch. Those are usual uh, locations when you're working from home as your office. So it's just trying to think about how can you switch things up. And if you're in those particular positions, that's fine. Just try and find different ways of incorporating movement throughout the day. So with that being said, I think people are always wondering if, if we add some of this, you know, make sure the screen monitor is up and next to one another, are there pieces of equipment that we could use and there are but i think you're going to want to think about what's going to fit your needs if you want to stand a little bit more that's something to think about um, and the equipment that you would use is a standing desk so one of the things that i get a lot of questions about because sitting is the new smoking um, and <laughs> You know, there's a lot of questions around, I should just stand all day then, and that's perfect. Well, yes and no. I think a couple of things you have to think about. If you have the space and it works for you, then a standing desk that's adjustable is perfect. You can raise the desk when you need it and have it um, lowered in the seated position with all of your equipment set to your needs and your functionality um, without having to adjust anything. But in some cases, you might not have the space and you, you know, you're trying to figure out what's the best way of going about this. Another way of um, adding to your workstation might be um, a standing desktop unit. And those are pieces of equipment that they've really improved over the years. It's great. You just plop it on top of your desk 
and it adjusts so that there's two tiers. The first tier is for your screen and the second tier is for your external keyboard. And so it's super easy. A lot of them, you just naturally have a spring on the one side, you lift it up and you're standing. And then when you're ready to sit, you just move and adjust that so that you're in the seated position. And really a lot of that, there's two things to think about. The first is, is your table going to hold the unit? Some of them can be a little heavy. And the second is, it's to your liking. Do you want a different color? Do you want wood? Do you want an adjustable keyboard tray that will slide out and slide in so you don't have to see it all the time? So that's really up to you in terms of preference. Um, the second thing I would say is, if you do go the route of alternating between standing and sitting, that you don't stand all day. Um, when you're when you stand all day or when you're sitting all day, that does impact your posture. So you do want to alternate and I would suggest that you start with 30 minutes of standing and then slowly work your way up until you can stand a little bit longer, whether it's two or three hours throughout the day. Because I was just gonna standing, yeah. I was just going to add to that. So any stagnant position for long periods of time is not really conducive, right? Because it's bad for circulation for the entire body. Feet, I mean, you know, your spine, your just mental health to be staring and being in one place without movement. So, um, you know, you can, you know, get up of several times in, in an hour and do a few squats. Do a few heel raises if you're standing, you have a standing desk. You know, vary it up, do some roll downs, just simple roll downs for the spine. Um, and then I was just gonna add, uh, you were talking about, you know, there's tons of equipment that's out there for sale or, um, uh, you know, props. Um, I have a, a really great way of, of propping a chair to keep the pelvis in a more neutral position so I just have like a large size towel folded and um, you're going to bring the towel under your pelvis, right under your sitting bones and your gluteal folds, right where the, you know, butt meets the hamstrings. And so what that essentially does, it's, it brings your pelvis to more neutral position. It kind of tips it forward so that, you know, you're still observing the natural curves in your back and in your pelvis. So, you know, it, you know, everybody has a towel <laughs> at home, I hope. Um, but yeah, you can try that. Um, it's just as long as the chair is, you know, sturdy, yeah, like you'd mentioned earlier, and not soft. So those soft chairs don't really work. And as long as it have wheels, otherwise, you, you know. Yes, that's definitely sometimes you can easily forget where your chair <laughs> rolls out. <laughs> And that's so true. I think, you know, use what you have at home and that's the beauty of it. So you don't necessarily need to go out and buy things, but if you do, just think about what it is that you would need and that would really work for you in your situation. The other thing I think you mentioned about, uh, that you mentioned just now was the pressure that it has on your feet. So if you are standing, make sure you have some support um, on the ground, whether it's an, uh, a mat, or you know a cushion. I actually use my seat cushion. I throw it on the floor. I step on it and use it while I'm standing. And then when I'm ready to sit, I pick it up and put it down. And those extra movements, just even bending down to pick up my cushion, is really helpful. That gives me a little extra movement throughout the day. I'm always yeah. trying to weave that in. You know, I was just going to add to that. You know what? Bare feet is very healthy. I have clients that are starting to come into the studio after being, you know, in quarantine and, you know, they haven't been wearing shoes, they haven't been going to work, they've been at home by themselves and their alignment of the feet has improved so much. Um, uh, so through, you know, because we, we've also been doing um, private uh, classes on Zoom, giving them exercises, but they all mentioned that they have much more sensitivity, they feel more of, your, of their feet um, being home and not wearing shoes. I so, didn't even think about that. That's so true. Yes, yeah, so if you guys <laughs> take your shoes off. At home. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. And I think also, you know, and, and we're talking about so many different pieces of so many parts of your body, right? 
I, I think it's only important, it's um, important for us to also think about how we're working at the station, you know? So we talked about the screen. So making sure that it's not too far from you. What I want you all to do, all of our viewers, is to also extend your hand out in front of you where your keyboard is. And the trick there is what you're looking for is whether or not you had had to stretch and reach for your keyboard or if they were right near you. And what I'm speaking about is if your arms are reaching out, what's going to happen is that you're using your shoulder muscles a little bit more throughout the day. And even that extension will put pressure on your shoulders as well as your upper back. And that's where you start to see that rounding of the shoulders. So the idea is if you're working with your laptop and your screen is where it needs to be, you're probably reaching a little bit further out. And that's where the benefit of an external keyboard comes in play. The idea is you want to have your um, elbow at 90 degree and have your shoulders close, your arms close in to your body versus reaching out. Another way to just kind of keep your shoulders more neutral mm -hmm. um, without, you know, doing any, any movements or like mobility or exercises is just shake your shoulders out, like up and down and let them fall naturally. And most of the time they fall more of that neutral position, which you do want to avoid. And I see a lot of people do this. They, they pull their shoulders back. So that actually creates a little dysfunction in, in, in your shoulder and your scapula, because if you try to lift your arm in this position, you, it's, you know, there's no movement in the shoulder blade, right? So we're talking about I mean, getting into the, like, the mechanics of the shoulder, and it creates way too much uh, uh, pressure in the rhomboid muscles, those upper back muscles. So, you know, pull your shoulders out of your back, shake them out, and let them just fall naturally so that they're right in line with your earlobes. And that's, you know, that's a, that's a better postural position for the shoulders. That's so great when you were doing that. I was like, oh, that's right. I need to do that right now too. I'm trying to look at you. <laughs> yeah, so you know um, what I mean, right? You, you, you want yeah. to a lot of this. They're like, well, I have, you know, I, I'm upright. I have good posture. Well, actually, it's not really, you know, that's not the best posture for your shoulders. Okay, creates way too much tension in your neck because it overworks the back muscles in a non, you know, conducive way. That's great. You, you've raised so many good points and um, we've talked about the time making sure that you're not spending too much time in a particular position. We've also talked about setting up your workstation with existing equipment or thinking about additional equipment. We've also definitely talked a lot about posture and the importance of it. Um, I, I want to make sure we also take time to review with our viewers some stretches that might help them um, throughout their work day and making sure that they find some value in things that they can do immediately as well. Um, Vavara, would you walk us through yeah. some of our stretches? Sure. So these stretches you can do um, seated. Um, if you, the first uh, kind of movement, um, I want you, uh, everyone to kind of think about is breath. That's the first primal movement that we need. Um, and it's very grounding. It brings an awareness to your body. It actually pauses you for a second. So the sequence of movements that I will show you today takes about four minutes. So first one, That's just close your eyes for a second. Let's all do this together. You know, have your feet in line with your knees. And then just Begin to breathe, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. And just feel that spiraling of the breath up the spine as you inhale and spiraling down of the breath down your spine as you exhale. So bring an awareness to where your pelvis is on the chair. And then find your sitting bones or feel for the sitting bones and make sure you're sitting right on top of them first. And then very gently press your feet into the floor, creating a little bit more elongation through your spine and then release the pressure. Again, press your feet actively into the floor. Think of rooting your feet into the floor and then give yourself a little tap tap on the crown of the head 
And that little proprioceptive feedback from your hand creates more elongation and length. So you would do that about four or five times. All right, so then from here, you're gonna interlace your fingers behind your head, and you wanna bring your spine into all of its natural movements, extension, forward flexion, side flexion, and undulation. So here's the first one, extending your spine, and leaning back into your hands. And then exhale, you're just gonna round. Even though we do stay in a lot of forward flexion throughout the day, you do need the forward flexion for a counter movement. And then exhale. So I'd recommend doing all of these six to 10 times. Inhaling, using your breath, you're only moving as fast as you're breathing. And then exhale. And then come to center. So now press, bring your arms down to your sides. We're gonna go into a little side flexion to both sides. So actively press your feet into the floor in the same way, feeling that elongation through the spine. And then just side flex, as if you're gonna pick up something with your right hand off the floor. And then come back to center. Over to the other side. Use your legs for a little bit more support. So you're not dumping into that side, you're going up and over like a little waterfall. And then one more to the other side, exhaling right into that stretch. Okay, so those were four movements. Now we're gonna add a little rotation, which is really important. So you're gonna slide the hands along your thighs and you're gonna look behind you as if somebody called your name. And then you're gonna bring your spine back. Inhale to the other side. Meanwhile, the legs are supporting you, pressing into the floor actively. Inhaling, exhale. And then one more to the other side, inhaling into that twist and exhale. Good. And I'm going to turn sideways so you can see the last movement, which is super important, is undulation of your spine. So you're going to sit up tall, you're going to lean forward with a straight back. You're going to look down at the belly button, you're going to round through the spine. So you're creating this little wave-like movement, because we want our spine to be supple. And then exhale, round through the back. And now you're going to reverse that. You're going to dive down with the crown of the head, use your legs for support, and then you're gonna extend your back as if somebody pulled you back by your ponytail with the crown of the head. And then once again, reverse, rounding through the spine and then tilting up using the back muscle. Good, so you would do that about uh, ten, six to 10 times. So now we're gonna mobilize the shoulders a little bit. Cut your arms down by your sides. You're gonna inhale as you lift the shoulders up to your ears. And then as you exhale, melt your shoulders down, flex your wrists, bring the arms overhead like a halo, and then bring the arms down. Again, inhale. Feel like your ribs are being pulled up off the pelvis, and then exhale, melting of your shoulder blades down your back, bring the arms overhead. Let's add a little arm circle. So you're going to inhale, take that right arm all the way up, open up that right side, and then flex your spine as you move through the other side. Inhale. So we're always playing with this extension and flexion of your spine, avoiding any stagnation. Inhale. And think of these like yawning stretches. Inhale, opening up that left armpit. Exhale. Good. All right, so if you do these, guys, you take the time to take five minutes to pause from your work and just move your spine. You'll feel not only more energized, but you'll keep the spine and the intravertebral discs healthy. I just wanted to share one more thing with you. You know, when we have this stagnant position of our wrists using the keyboard or our phone, the muscles in the forearms get super tight and create tension in our wrists. So there's a couple of nerves that we want to stretch. So we've got the ulnar nerve that runs, you're going to think of your little pinky. 
So you're gonna make a little tray like this with your arm, and you're gonna flip that over and then place the hand on the side of your face and give it very tiny pressure, just hold that. You wanna do it one arm at a time, and you're gonna feel a little bit of this nervy sensation going all the way from your pinky down to your shoulder. And then let's do the other side. Make a little tray, spin that under, and then hold. And I like to close my eyes for these to get that felt sense of what's happening in the body and my breath. So that was the ulnar stretch. And let's just do one more stretch, which is the radial stretch. Okay, so this one is kind of a funny movement. It's going to remind you of when you were a child. Go like this. You're going to flip your palms under and make little eyeglasses, and you're going to hold. Yeah, exactly. Skip. Exactly. <laughs> hold. You feel that? So oh, you're going to feel it right from the thumb. And you would do that about five times, and you shake it out. And I, you know, I mean, right away, you feel the difference, right? Oh, that's great, Vavara. I, there were some of the stretches that I really felt I needed that. So thank you so much. I'm hoping that our viewers also felt the same. Please, that was welcome. wonderful. Um, we are actually at the 30 minute mark. I can't believe we went through all of this and had so much discussion around it. I know there's so much more, but we do appreciate everybody joining us. And again, thank you, Vavara, for joining thank us. Thank you so much for having me. And perfect. Um, Rise and Thrive will be back next week with tips on how to keep your skin hydrated during the summer months. We hope you tune in and thank you again so much for joining us today.